Hey, this is Jamie with Stonemaier Games, and today I'm going to talk about my, not my top 10 favorite games, but 10 different ways, 10 unique ways that games can encourage us to get out of our seats and stand up. Um, tabletop games specifically. I'm thinking about this a little bit uh, because I spend a lot of time sitting down during the day, and when I have game nights, whether they're in person or virtual, typically I am sitting down during those game nights. And every now and then, a game inspires or requires me to stand up. And when it does, I kind of notice it because I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm moving. I'm, I'm, this is not what I normally do when I'm playing games. I'm actually sitting, getting up and moving around, and it feels good. It feels invigorating to do that. Uh, and so today, I wanted to talk about 10 different ways that games can, can get you out of your seat while you play without hurting the experience. Because sometimes I think it, like one of the reasons we play tabletop games is to relax and sit down and play a game, not necessarily to have a big active game, otherwise we would play a sport. So the first category I want to mention is uh, giving players, and this is a, the, probably the weirdest one to mention, but giving players unique turns when they're on, when, it, when it's their, uh, not their turn, but it, it's uh, kind of their time to shine. Uh, you'll get it when I give the example. The example is La Boca. In La Boca, two players sit on opposite sides um, of, a, of, a, of a little device that they are using to build a block uh, tower, essentially, where your perspective matters, where what I see on one side is different than what you see on the other side, and we each need our sides to, to, uh, to align with the card, the goal that we're trying to match up that, in that game. And on La Boca, only two players are playing at a time. So all other players are kind of waiting for their turn, but a turn only takes, I, I believe, one minute. Um, so it doesn't take very long. But you, you have to get up from the table and kind of sit down in your position on the table when it's your turn to do this thing. It's kind of like you're on display. It, everybody's watching you do this thing for one minute. You can kind of feel the pressure when you do it. But I thought that was a neat way. I actually couldn't think of any other examples that do this. Um, and I'm obviously not describing it very well, but if you can think about any other games that do this La Boca style mechanism, not the La Boca mechanism itself, where you have to get up and sit in a certain position on a table at a certain time to take your turn, uh, usually with one other player. One kind of other example of this is uh, Captain Sonar, but it's a little different. I, I actually don't find myself sitting up all that much when I play Captain Sonar, but it, it can happen. The next category, probably the biggest category, and perhaps the most obvious, is dexterity games. Um, there are, you know, a lot of different dexterity games where you have to get up at that exact moment and, and, and pick something off a, a pile, like at uh, men at work, or put something on a pile. Uh, the examples that I have here are Manara, Final Flictier, Ice Cool, Rhino Hero, Suspend, Crokinole, and Pitch Car. And the one I want to show, because uh, it, pro probably my favorite on this list, is Flip Ships. Flip Ships is a cooperative game where only one player at a time is flicking a, uh, a, a token from the edge of the table and hopefully landing it on some alien ships that are getting closer and closer to Earth. You're trying to land it on a, as many alien ships as possible. It's a great cooperative game. I love dexterity mixed with cooperation because it means that you are sharing in the successes and sharing in your uh, miserable failures when you flick way off the board or something like that. Um, but you have to stand up. You, you, players are kind of gathered around the table while you're playing flip ships. Almost people don't even sit down when it's not their turn, but when it is your turn, you almost definitely have to stand up and get into the position to make the flick. So I think dexterity games, flip ships as my example, um, and Final Flick Tier was a very recent one that I played, but Flip Ships, probably one of my favorites, and that is uh, the category of dexterity games for games that inspire you to stand up, or require, in this case, you to stand up. Perspective is my third category. When a game requires you to look at things from a specific angle, um, and that angle might change throughout the game, or the angle that you need to look at. And my example here is Tang Garden by Thundergriff Games. Beautiful game that's all about perspective. You're setting up this uh, this board as you as you play. It's kind of a tile placement board, but there's these 3D things on it, and you're always kind of looking at uh, what you can see and what different characters can see across the board. And it does require you at certain times to stand up and look at the board from a different perspective, from, from one of the four different perspectives. I think this is a really clever addition of just saying, you know, you can sit down for most of the game, but every now and then, stand up and, and look at things a different way. Uh, I think Tang Garden does this really well. The game The Climbers does it really well. The Climbers is a game where you are trying to climb up a mountain and essentially keep moving. You're trying to keep moving on onto uh, by moving blocks th uh, on this tower uh, into eligible positions that let you keep moving 
but your color is very relevant because you, you're flipping the, the blocks to, to your color so that you can move on to your color. Um, and mental blocks. Mental blocks is another great example of a game of this, this style where your perspective in mental blocks is the entire game. You have a, it's a cooperative game where you know one angle of a thing that must be built, kind of like La Boca, but with but cooperative and with more players. And you are trying to work together to uh, to build this thing that works for everyone's card. And so you're constantly moving around the table. You're picking up things. You're touching them. You're, you're putting them on the. You're, you're helping to build the thing in a way that works for you. But mostly your perspective matters. Your perspective that you have that not uh, other players do not have. So that's my third category here. My fourth category is intensity. This is one that I didn't think of at first, but I was actually, and uh, this is going to be a little confusing because I just said that perspective is ca uh, the, the category was perspective a second ago. I was on a YouTube channel recently discussing this topic. The YouTube channel is also called Perspective, and they brought up a few games where the game is so intense that you almost find yourself standing up as you're thinking about all your different options on the board. Um, so you're kind of caught up in the moment of intensity and decisions and perhaps analysis paralysis. And some of the examples they gave were PAX Premier 2nd Edition, which I haven't played, and Teotihuacan, which I've mostly played on Board Game Arena, but I have played it once in person. That is a really thinky game where you, you, you do, where I find myself standing up and, and, and thinking about what the best decision is at this moment. So I like that, that category of intensity, intensity of, of decisions and decision space in, in the game. There are a lot of heavier games that I think would fit into this category. Uh, the fifth category is scheming. So this is uh, when, you, when you're a little devious in games and you're trying to negotiate with players, perhaps behind other players' backs, and you have to get up from the table and maybe whisper in someone's ear or pull them away from the table for a minute and negotiate with them and say something that you don't want other players to hear. Uh, I think maybe the a classic example of this is the Game of Thrones board game, where you are constantly making deals and backstabbing, and some of those deals happen away from the table. I also had it happen a few times during my wonderful playthrough of Risk Legacy, where there were a few deals that were struck when, when people needed to step away from the table for a minute, and it just creates a, it, it really brings the theme into a game like that. One example of a game that I haven't played is Mega Civilization, where, uh, for a few, it would fit into a few different categories on this list, but one of the reasons is there's a lot of active trading in the game uh, that requires you to to get up from the table and move around and uh, make like trade actively with a bunch of other players who are moving around the table as well. Uh, and actually, that that ties into one that I forgot to put on this list, which is trade on the tigress. Trade on the tigress is a, is a game. Um, actually, I'll put it in a future category, but uh, that is another trading game where you're where you're getting up and uh, and, and talking and, and negotiating negotiating with players and scheming with them. Not really scheming as much, but more trading with them. So my sixth category is size. So if the board size is so big that if you need to touch something on the board or move something on the board, you actually have to get out of your seat to reach it. Some examples of this are Twilight Imperium Fourth Edition, Star Wars Rebellion, and our own game Scythe. Scythe, I wanted to mention Scythe here because I think Scythe does pretty, something pretty interesting with the game board that, uh, that I don't know if I've seen another publisher do yet. This was a, a Kickstarter backer recommendation when we originally did it. So the Scythe board, one side of the board is the standard size. You can see how big the hexes are there. But the back side of the board, it has these giant hexes. I need to flip it around to show you one of the giant hexes. Um, which side am I on here? One, yeah, one side has the giant hexes, but only two-thirds of the board. Do I have the right board here? Nope, I don't have the right board here. Um, well, that's very odd. I have a side board somehow that has the, uh, the same thing on both sides. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> that's a terrible example. Side the, the side boards are supposed to have, I don't know how that happened, um, they're supposed to have on the back side a, a bigger side of the board that uh, that you can combine with an another with another board a board attachment that makes everything bigger. So it's it's the same board just bigger, and then you slide on. You can buy an additional attachment to that to complete that side of the board to make it full. Uh, the next so that's board size. The uh, what seventh category is climactic moments in games. I struggled actually to think of things that fit into this category because I don't play a lot of games that come down to a climactic moment 
typically that involves like a roll of the die or a flip of the card or something random that you don't know whether or not it's going to happen. You're going to swing your way or not. But one example that did come up was Camel Up. Um, I think Camel Up is, is a great example of, of this where in, uh, in Camel Up you are, you're, you're essentially you're betting on uh, camels that are racing around a track. You are not one of the camels, you're betting on these camels. And there are moments where you are hoping that something will happen. And it happens every round, kind of there's this suspenseful moment when it comes down to the last roll of which camel will move or won't move or how far they'll move. And it is a dramatic moment for multiple players, especially the player who's actually rolling the dice. So I think Camel Up fits into this climactic category really well. The eighth category are social games that require you to stand up and move around um, simply because that's that's how they how they work. Werewolf is one example of this. You don't necessarily have to get up a lot in Werewolf, but it does happen a little bit. But the biggest one, I, uh, the, I think the best example of this is two rooms and a boom, where you literally start in different rooms of, of a house, a convention, wherever you are, different sides of a room, and, uh, and then you're combining, then you're mingling and intermixing and playing the game. It's all standing up. I think you hardly ever sit down while playing two rooms and a boom. I think that was cool. I don't, I don't know if they designed it with the intention of getting players up and moving around, but it definitely has that effect. So that's kind of social games. My ninth category is silly games. And Happy Salmon is the, the game in this category. And Happy Salmon, it's a short, silly game. It's kind of one that you play maybe before game night, at the end of the game night, maybe at a convention. It's loud and silly. You're instructed to do all these different things. Um, and you're standing up while you do it. And actually, while, I'm, while I'm, we're saying that, I, I can think of... Um, What's the other game that makes you stand up and do stuff? A space team. Space team often gets me out of my seat as well, even when I'm playing the digital version. The last category here is uh, real-time games. I think real-time games can, can they have that intensity of getting you out of, out of your seat as well. Trade on the Tigris is the one that I thought of earlier that fits into this category um, in that it is a real-time trading game. There's also our game. Pendulum, which is a simultaneous game with, with a timer, with timers in the game. I often find myself getting out of my seat and either flipping the timer or just, just caught up in the moment as time runs down. It just adds to that extra intensity. And another example of this is Magic Maze, a cooperative game where players are moving just a few tokens around the board. Um, and whether you are moving the token and reaching across the board to do it in real time or you're trying to get someone's attention in real time just so that they can take their move, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really cool game for doing that as well. I think real time can add to that, that need, that feel the need to get out of your seat and do something now because of that urgency behind it. So those are my examples of games that, uh, that lead to, to stand up moments or prolonged standing up. You stand up throughout the game or just for a few moments throughout the game, whether they're inspiring you to do that or requiring you to do that. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. If you can think of other games where you find yourself getting out of your seat for any of these reasons, um, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks.